Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember it? So you don't have to. Remember when I said I didn't like the Flintstones cartoon? <laughs> Obviously you do. Well, there's another classic old cartoon that I also find I really can't stand. Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Obviously now it's big a backlash. He never did anything for me because it's basically just one joke. He can't see. The rest of the time, he just sort of smiles and looks happy, so there's no real comedic suffering on his part. Or even really that much to the people around him. He falls, he misses something, but he's always okay. Where's the comedy? How does that get a laugh? The only thing less funny than Mr. Magoo is giving him a ridiculous film budget to explain how unfunny he is. Ah! If you can't see what's wrong with this flick, then you're as nearsighted as this dumbass idea. You know the term, if it's not broken, don't fix it? Well, there was a term in the 90s that went, if it's broken, Disney's found a screenplay. This was during their especially bad run of horrible live-action movies. And trust me when I say this is certainly the topping flag of shit now. It was an age where ideas to make movies out of was at an all-time low... Well, almost all-time low. Let's stumble into Mr. Magoo. Wow, the first second, literally the first second of this film annoys me. Ah, there's only 5,492 to go. Good night, Mrs. Winterbottom. Ugliest hairdo I've ever seen. I guess it figures that we start off on the cartoon during the credits, but honestly, it's kind of distracting that while Leslie Nielsen stars as Magoo in the movie, he doesn't do his voice in the credits. I know it's a nitpick, but it just sort of emphasizes the direct side-by-side -side comparison of how much these two don't have in common. It's like if in a Popeye movie they start with a cartoon and the original voice, but then suddenly cut to someone completely different. Yo, I'm Popeye and shit. We do finally get the live-action version starring the late Leslie Nielsen, who's apparently a rich canned vegetable entrepreneur, god, there's so many, who donated a museum wing to a rare ruby. It's exquisite. No, actually it's corundum. What the hell is that woman wearing? Remind me who the nearsighted kook is in this movie? Her hat looks like a cartoon iris that got stuck halfway through. Yeah, what the fuck sauce? We see Magoo look around the museum while... Oh, 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 he mistook something for something else. Well, let's hope that joke doesn't get old real quick! Oh my gosh, would you look at that? And no, your eyes aren't as bad as his. That is, in fact, Jennifer Gardner. Pre-career, obviously. I am Stacy Sempana Hoditra. This is my nephew, Waldo. <laughs> Waldo Magoo. It is an honor. Oh god, what ethnicity do they have her mocking? With the vague accent, the weird hair, that Chinese Cracker Jack sailor suit? It's like the Quizak Hatterack of stereotypes. It insults all races at once. May all of the exhibits in this hall shine with the light of human knowledge. <laughs> he tries cutting the ribbon, but ends up cutting an electrical cord. If you tell me if the scene looks more cutesy or horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, indoor fireworks? <laughs> and a dozen people were in critical condition. Charming eye joke has dark consequences. Public telephone. Oh, oh excuse me, sir. He confuses a mummy's tomb for a telephone booth, and the door closes in behind him. Later that night, we see a children's stage play version of Catwoman and Bane trying to break into the museum to steal the ruby. Luckily, she finds some Pee Wee's Playhouse dinosaurs to hide behind as she moves forward with the robbery. <laughs> By the way, you ever notice how bad movies have really poorly designed museums? Didn't Batman and Robin also have the same rare jewel slash dinosaur slash Egyptian art slash exotic plant life exhibit? A little cluttered, don't you think? Magoo right no finally comes out of the tomb. Wait, he was in that box with the mummy for five hours? That's more than a vision problem, that's a mental psychosis. And the robbers get away by knocking the guard into the phony styrofoam exhibit. The next day we see that Garner is so distressed that she put on her distraught Tylenol hat and investigators come to look at the scene. Chuck Stupak, FBI. Gustav Andes, CIA. Ernie, no. God 
damn it, I'm sick of you showing up and shit! You're a good actor, you have style and class. Please tell me you're doing stage work somewhere, I'll gladly see it just to apologize for the fact that you're in this dick demon! The CIA has no jurisdiction on American soil. This could very well become an international incident. Not if you don't get in my way, fancy pants. Mm. Oh no, 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 you did not just mm, Ernie Hudson, okay? You say that for a Chris Tucker, not an Ernie Hudson! Mm. Early, get up. <laughs> Meanwhile, we see the two robbers talk about last night's heist. There's nothing in the papers. It's a trap. They're trying to lull us into a false sense of security and then bust us when we make a careless move. That's yesterday's paper. Oh. That's right, folks. You just witnessed a film where they actually played the wah 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 music. Little known fact, the composer actually killed himself three minutes later after being forced to write that piece. She gets him to hand over the giant ring pop and kicks him off the boat. But he tries to take her down with him and the jewel falls into Magoo's boat, who just happened to be passing by. This guy is like an unfunny duo seeking missile. Blast your planet, Jabbath, you! They hope they can get back at the opera that night where Magoo is not only attending, but also... performing? Yeah, a little confusing, seeing how we've never seen him sing, and it's never explained whether or not he can sing. In fact, according to this movie, Mr. Magoo is well-rounded enough to be put in any situation at any location, except what he actually does for a living. Yeah, his job allows him to do all this richy stuff, but we're never actually allowed to see what he does. He's said to be the canned vegetable king. Wouldn't it make sense to have him in a canned vegetable factory, then? There's gotta be some comedic opportunities there. But no, fuck it, we got a castrated episode of I Spy to watch. Just spotted a conspicuous white male. Dirty clothes, needs haircut. Where? Look to your left. Oh snap! You just got HUD! <laughs> the lady thief disguises herself and tries to get an interview with him while the male thief is a little bit more direct. Just showing the audience what that does? Okay. <laughs> but he can't get past his Loki horns, and big shock, he gets knocked out! Which causes him to accidentally turn on a giant fan. <laughs> yeah! Because if there's anything every opera performance needs with the sensitivity of the singer's voices, it's a giant, loud, hard-to-control wind machine! Why don't all opera houses have this? The next day, he meets up with the thief, still thinking she's a reporter, and she tries to put the moves on him. Trunella. Uh, mm. <laughs> you know, this film is so dull and useless, I'm actually more interested in the backstory of the fish. Did he have a good life? Do you think his family appreciates what the sacrificing of his body is going to? Well, did you see what they did with Howard's body? Yes, yes I did. Please tell me he's at least being used to feed a poor starving family. No, he's... He's being used for a live-action version of Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Warner Brothers or Disney? Disney. <laughs> we also get a little info about that thief as well. It's Luann Lesur, the Black Widow. She kills all of her male accomplices. No one has ever been able to finger her. What a shame. They die before they finger her? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Do you like that, Paul? Do you like that? Do you like that, there, Paul? Do you like that? Hi, is a kite. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back with a Miss Penelope Cruz.